So guess what I found today, Jeff, before I came in here? What did you find? I found Space Jam on Blu-ray for $7. No way. So I bought it. Blu-ray? Blu yeah, <laughs> Blu-ray Space Jam. What do you think about – oh, new – can we do my topic now? <laughs> what do you think about <laughs> Space Jam 2 with LeBron? Do I go into it? Kind of. I have to intro the show. It's a weird intro, right, but so let's do it. Spoilers, part two is going to be Space Jam 2. Yeah. Yeah. Like 20 years later. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of At The Bar Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Mike. Joining me, as always, Jeff, Mr. Hollywood. Yep. How these? How, you like these sunglasses? I do, yeah. We're both wearing sunglasses today, guys. We're trying on a new thing. Yeah, Jeff is uh, Hollywooding me out. He gave me, let me use a pair of shades of his. So I feel like Mike Hollywood. Yeah, we'll get you some wooden watches soon. Yeah. And you'll be The white or black ones? The black ones. I like them like that. You like the black yeah, ones yeah, better? Yeah, the dark ones a lot better. Yeah, black ones are better. usually better. Yeah. So that's why they say once you go black, you never go back with exactly. watches. Yeah, with watches, yeah. Right. And sunglasses because both of our sunglasses are black. Uh, mine, are, mine are tortoise. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. They're brown. They look black in the shade. Yeah. So anyway, we're here recording live at World Beer UCF, as always. Another beautiful Thursday here. The crowd's good. We're hanging out. It's, it's going to be a pretty chill episode. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're doing a, a different one today. Yeah, for the first time in 20-some-odd episodes, we're actually not going to be talking about beer. We're putting the beer – well, we're putting the beer in our tummies, but we're, yeah. we'll, we'll mention what we're drinking, yeah. I guess. But. So every episode, we may not mention what we're drinking, but we're always drinking every episode. So we just had a uh, – my favorite Saturday Woodchuck. We had their barrel select. Jeff, how'd you like it? I liked it a lot. Uh, it's a it's a whiskey barrel a whiskey yeah. barrel Kentucky yeah. whiskey yeah. barrel age uh, cider. So it's solid. Pretty cool. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good. And then we just cracked open a Do South Cafe Ole Espresso Porter, five point seven percent. Yeah, but uh, well, that, that Woodchuck was seven percent. Yeah, the cider, yeah. which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So we're actually I'm I'm very excited because we're giving beer a little break. Yes. So those in the craft beer world realize that craft beer news doesn't come every single day. That's newsworthy. Every every week or yeah. two, you maybe get like a story. But that's about it. I don't want to be like the ESPN of craft beer where yeah. we just create fake stories and then yeah. talk about them for like yeah. weeks at a time. So like, yeah, no, we don't. We don't. We're gonna we're gonna be we're just gonna take a break. We're gonna take a little break. We're gonna allow you guys to recollect your craft beer yeah. enthusiasm. Yeah. And then we'll come back at you, hard, with our with our road trip. Yeah, that's coming up. Um, so yeah, you know, half of the show is technically bar conversations. Granted, we've had few and far in between. Yeah, but uh, although you know, we've been introing with some been pretty funny ones lately. Yeah, lately we've been having some, but we haven't had an episode dedicated to bar conversations. Correct. So this would be our first ever episode dedicated to the dudes, things dudes talk about at a bar, chicks and shit, and chicks and shit. Yeah. So, first half topic is mine. It's going to be a little bit of a scenario I want everyone listening to participate in. Yeah, gonna be we're going to – I think the comments will be really funny, and I yeah. think we'll find some really awkward combos for this yeah. one. Mine's going to be a little awkward and awesome. So, my topic is you're getting married, right? You're going to Vegas for your bachelor party, full weekend, Thursday to Sunday, right? What would be – you got to pick your groomsmen, and they all have to be celebrities. So who would be your five groomsmen, one of them being your best man? So your best man and four other celebrity groomsmen to be at your bachelor party for your wedding. All right. So want me to go that's, first? That's the question. Or do so, you want to go first? We have to break it down. <clears throat> break it down for me. Break it down. Best man doesn't necessarily mean he is – doesn't mean anything. Well, it does. It does. It in, means in he's the best of, of men. He's the best right, one besides right. you because you're the right. groom. But every – I think we talked about this before we started recording. Every guy has that wild card friend right. in his bachelor party. Yep. It's, a, it's a bachelor party staple. You need yeah. the wild card. Every you need man. the guy who's getting thrown out of the strip clubs yeah. and, getting, and getting you into trouble. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. So, ladies, the man you're marrying – one of those dudes up there, he, he may be your husband. Is the is wild, wild card, card at everybody else's as, bachelor yeah, party. Yeah. 
I have a funny bachelor party story that we go could, for it. Should we go into it? Yeah. So I've I've been the best man <laughs> at uh, at two weddings, and I've planned two bachelor parties, and it, it's stressful. I don't and I don't envy it. I, I hate yeah. it. Yeah. I actually told all my friends. Um, I like I love not, weddings. Not I'm not like cocky enough to be like I'm going to be there. But I I, yeah. I don't anticipate being best man at, at anybody else's weddings. I hope I'm done. But I told them as a preemptive strike at the last wedding I was at. I was like. If I'm on your list for best man candidates, I, I truly appreciate it, but just go ahead and cross me the fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I love the idea of it, and I appreciate you thinking of me that way. I'll ha- happily be a groomsman, yeah. but I do not want to plan another bachelor party or give another speech. And it's not that I don't like talking. It's that I don't like after your speech when 300 people at a wedding come up to you and shake your hand and tell Dude, you how good of a job I, you did. I like that, though. That was, I did that was not such like an it. ego boost for me. See, for me, it was like, all right. You get there, you have to go take pictures separate with the, of the groomsmen. You have to go with the groom, and you have to go take pictures. You have to go. You have responsibilities. You can't just get blasted the day of the wedding <laughs> and just get fucking hammered. Jeff, you could. And Let's then be like real. you could. And then like you give your speech, and finally you're like, okay, now I can drink. Now you're done. Now but I you're can not drink. done. But you're not because you're now not. every single person in that has to come wedding. up and yep. tell you, great job, man. Yeah. Wow, you're really that was funny. Yeah. You're, you're, like, awesome. you're like, dude, sh- just let me let me be, <laughs> let me be, dude. Let me have yeah. some, have some fun here. I'm trying to break it down. Yeah. Trying to do a fucking worm out here on the dance floor <laughs> and you're and you're getting up in my shit right now <laughs> but try to do the worm bro but anyway so back to the story so we're at a, a bachelor party in new orleans and uh it was uh getting real late it was about probably four three thirty four in the morning oh, out yeah. in new orleans and everybody's still going and the party's you know going on and the uh the groom comes up to me and he's like hey man you know we went out last night real hard until about same thing three thirty four in the morning he's mm-hmm. like I could really, I really would like to go home. And I'm like, well, you can't leave unless everybody leaves. You're the groom. Yeah. So I'm like, he's like, try and get everybody to go. And I'm like, I can't get everybody to go. They're all at a fucking strip club right now. Like, what the hell, how am I getting, I'm not more interesting than what they're seeing on stage. So, so my, my, I hatched this idea in my drunken mind and it works perfectly. So you guys feel free to use this. It's awesome. So I'm just going to say groom for uh, the kid's name to keep his identity uh, a secret, but I go up to the group. Uh, there's like seven guys at the stage, and then there's like a group of four over at a table. Right. And then there's me and groom, and we're over talking to each other. So I walk up to the stage, and I go, guys, guys, we got to get the fuck out of here. And they're like, what? And I go, groom just stuck his finger in a stripper's asshole, and we're getting kicked out. <laughs> and everybody instantly, nobody goes, what, what? <laughs> everybody just goes, oh, okay, and stands up and walks the fuck out the door. So I go over to the table, do the same thing. Yo. He just stuck a finger in the stripper's asshole getting a lap dance. We got to get out of here. The, the bouncer's kicking us out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody just gets out. We get in two calves, go back to the freaking house. I'm like, wow, that was awesome. That worked that's, out well. That's what's funny when, when people say guys are complicated. We're not complicated. <laughs> we're like, we're so simple. We're probably complicated. Like, you could have said anything else. They'd be like, nah, dude. Like, right. there's, but, stuff, there's things in my face. The fact that. But you had to go. <laughs> the fact that like, nobody questioned yeah, why like, he oh, did it okay, or did go. he really do it. <laughs> yeah. Just like, oh, okay. They're probably like, oh shit, time to ride. We gotta go now. We yeah, gotta go now. I can't believe you just yeah. put a finger in a girl's butt. Dude, groom, you're fucking nuts, bro. <laughs> bachelor party, whoa. <laughs> yeah, just a great bachelor party. And none of it actually happened, but he thought it was hilarious too. He was in on it. <laughs> yeah. Like the next day, he's like, yeah, I don't know, man. I was really I just, blacked out. Yeah, I, just, I think I, I think we finally was. told everybody that? like a year later at our fantasy baseball draft. <laughs> like, yeah, he didn't actually do that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like he's been married under the pretense yeah, of the figuring triples but but her buttholes. <laughs> yeah. Dude, just imagine them telling everyone, dude, yeah, I went to my buddy's wedding, dude. He stuck a finger in, his, in the stripper's ass and we got kicked out. <laughs> the story's not even true. <laughs> Those are the best kind of stories though. Those are the best ones. I was the best man once. I think it's great. Like I feel it boosts your ego and it, and it feels great. Like you're important, you gotta make decisions and like yeah. but do like planning a bachelor party. Oh my god, it is it's stressful, awful. man. And it's like I like the like it was my best friend in the whole fucking world got married, so I was like, it was I liked it. I, it was a good experience. Like we, me and him took pictures. Me and him like talked on the phone, talked about this and that, and planning out his bachelor party and things he wanted, things he didn't want. You know, there's pictures of at his wedding of just me and him. It's like things like that outweigh the stress of planning a right. bachelor party, right? His was in uh, South Beach, and literally, we there was. I don't know, there was like eight, nine of us, ten of us, eleven. I don't, I don't, there was like between eight and eleven people. Each of us probably spent like four hundred dollars. Oh yeah. Just that one night. Because that's that's South Beach. Yeah. You're talking eight dollars for a Bud Light. 
Yep. Eleven dollars for a shot of Fireball each. Yep. Like what we went to some like bar in between like hotels and like we were all drunk, whatever, having a good time. Like one of my uh, buddies, a wild card, goes up to the bar is like, "Hey man, eleven shots of Fireball." However many people there were. So well, cheers, there's his, man. There's his know, like three hundred dollar tab. Yeah. It was he, his was like one hundred twenty no, bucks. One hundred twenty bucks. He looks at us pale, like, "Oh my god, I cannot believe I just spent." 120 bucks. We're like, don't worry, dude, we got you. So the next bar we go to, you know, we picked up his tab, shit like that, you know. I remember uh, paying, I got three pictures of Coors Light at some Irish bar, and like the tab was like 60 bucks. Like each picture was $20 of Coors Light. And we were so drunk, we only drank half of one of them. Oh, God. That's bad. So I was kind of butthurt, but I was like, ah, it's my fault. That's what you got to do. You know, yeah. So anyway, back to the topic. Bash, uh, bachelor parties are fucking awesome. I loved when people were shaking my hand. Like, dude, I love your speech was better than the maid of honor. I was like, you got them right, bro. Well, yeah, I mean that's that's a given. Yeah, because we don't just like weep and cry. No, that's like the that's the that's where all the secrets come out. Let me give you the bachelorette. <laughs> I'll give a bachelorette speech right now. So I met so and so in college, and then and then we became best friends, and then we became best friends. And that's it. And then they cry the entire time. Yeah. And that's every single bachelorette. They, they're person. really sentimental. Yeah. It's all cry. Yeah. Or like really, like, yeah, like a couple jokes in there, but like nothing really too like, <laughs> oh my God, that shit was yeah. so funny. A guy's best man speech, all the dirt comes out. It's especially challenging. Especially mine. It's really challenging though, because you have to find the fine line to tell dirty stories cleanly. Yeah. And then also in a subtle enough way where the friends pick up on it, yep. but the parents that's exactly do not. Exactly what I did. And it's that's what you have to do. And that's then everybody exactly goes, "Whoa!" And all of the, all of our buddies were all laughing because I just dabbled in a story about him, and he knew, his wife knew, and all the boys knew. But his family's like, "Oh, that's so funny." They all went out, got drunk together, and he was in Mike's room with his boxers on. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I, they know all this story. But yeah. So anyway, you're in Vegas. You're you're getting married, right? You gotta pick five celebrities to be your groom's party. I have a feeling, I have about three picked out. Yeah, I I don't have a full I'll, groom's I'll have a full, party. So full what's group. the groom's party? So it's five. We're we doing five. We're doing five groomsmen. One one of one them best is man. the best man. You're correct. Yeah, one of them's the best man. And then four groomsmen. And then four groomsmen. Okay. Right. Best man. Already and, have and you have to out. tell us. You have to tell us your wallet card. Okay, so best man. I, well, I'm gonna have two wild cards because I already know the two people. That's fine. That you have I to want. have at least one. They're g- these two wild cards are well known for being wild cards. Okay. Um, but the best man has to be the A-lister of all A- A-listers, Mr. Justin Timberlake. <laughs> for sure. Okay. All right. One. Uh, <laughs> He's good looking. Chicks. Yeah. Everywhere. Well, you're getting married. It doesn't matter. It's a bachelor party. You want to have chicks around you. But you're with five other celebrities. That's the point, is that you have chicks okay. around you. I don't want to argue you're your best man. Okay. Well, plus, it's JT. He's the best I mean, at everything. I don't agree with it, but He okay. is the best man in the world. So, like, that's he's okay. my best man now. Because, like, he's good at everything. Literally everything. He's like a scratch golfer and, like, a great... A you have great a point. singer everything and a good he actor, is, and, is, and every he, he's just, he excels at everything. His wife is like one of the hottest women alive, and I still think he could do better. Yeah, like like Jessica Biel, like man, smoke show. Yeah, Justin Timberlake settled. <laughs> like, okay, you know, are like, you admitting something? <laughs> I fucking, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm yeah. admitting. So yes, that's my best man, okay. Mr. JT. Um, I'll go into my two wild cards because I have them picked out. Okay, so it's in Vegas, like bachelor party in Vegas, right? right? So I got to go with wild card of the hangover, Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> Alan. Adam, Alan himself. he is the wild okay. card of wild cards. And now, it's are proven. you picking the character or the real actor? Either way. Okay. That guy is hilarious. Okay. I don't care. All right. Um, my next wild card is Charlie Day. And I don't care if it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Charlie, or any movie he's ever done. <laughs> Charlie Day. He's like the same actor in like every. Always Sunny yeah, in Philadelphia. He literally yeah. is the wild card in all their little like ploys that they do. Yeah. And when he cuts the brakes and jumps out, wild card, bitches. <laughs> Tight. <laughs> so, yeah. Charlie Day would be on there as well. Um, so, having said that, now I think I need some like cool, chill guys. Yeah. You know, obvious. I mean, JT is cool and chill, yeah. though. So, he, but he's also like energetic. He can be chill, then he can like just like mood dance. All right, I'm gonna go with my next one. Has been a longtime idol of my life, Derek Jeter. Is he a celebrity? 
or an athlete. I'll take it. Oh, I'll take uh, it. He's, it's Derek Jeter. He's a celebrity. Okay. He, he gets, yeah. He's got if there's it. anybody else, I'd also say has banged it. Jessica Biel though. So that's now we got Eskimo Allegedly. Bros on the on the <laughs> tour. So you know. <laughs> That might get, get real weird. awkward. It might get weird. <laughs> Good thing Galifianakis <laughs> is there. <laughs> Galifianakis is there to just just turn Make it way worse. <laughs> yeah, just to turn everything into yeah. gold, right? Yeah. Um, and then let's see, a chill guy who's also funny. I would go, and this is they've done movies together, and their dynamic is hilarious. But he's also a big actor that I'm, I'm a fan of is Robert Downey Jr. and him and Zach Galifianakis in oh, Due Date that's was good, so fucking funny. Pick. And I could just I could watch that for the entire bachelor party. Oh, that's a good pick. So June, Downey Jr., Galifianakis, Charlie Day, Justin Timberlake, Derek Jeter, and Derek Jeter all together. Derek Jeter doesn't really fit in with the crew, but I yeah, think me and Jeter he's might like just the hang quiet out. One that's just like, but he might be wild card too, though. He could be. He could get. You don't know. Because he might be. Know. He's never so know different that he's he's yeah. the odd man out. And the odd man out usually is the one who goes crazy. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is definitely a wild card too. He does have a drug past. Yeah, and you're talking Vegas here. That's true. This is true. He might be, bring all the drugs. Let's just change out Derek Jeter for Mickey Rourke. <laughs> so this is being like a drug infused. We're just party. we're just having a Would crazy he blow time all weekend. We're just gonna do. We're all going. We're all jumping off the wagon. Nice. I'm glad that you said those guys because we think so much alike that none of those guys are on my list. Awesome. So that's not so much alike then. That's the opposite of thinking alike. Right. Which is <laughs> which is why I'm glad that we didn't have oh, half of our okay, people being the saying. same fucking person. So I was gonna say Derek Jeter, but I went off celebrities, not necessarily athletes, but he's it like is, my favorite Derek person Jeter is in a, history. Is a god, yeah, to me. Yeah. So like I'll let it I'll let it slide. It counts. Oh yeah, we're both Yankees fans, so yeah. you know. So he was my childhood. One of them, one of my groomsmen will be Will Ferrell. I was gonna say Will Ferrell, but I I'm, didn't. I'm glad I did not. Because I think he's a he's a good balance between being serious and like just going off the wall crazy. And he I think he'd, he'd, well. he'd make me laugh. Right. Yeah. So I would do Will Ferrell. Another groomsman would be Brian Cranston from Breaking Bad. You like his character in Breaking Bad? I love his character. I just, he's, dude, he just you want Heisenberg on your? I want <laughs> Heisenberg. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because him and Will Ferrell. Brian Cranston that's so is weird. fucking awesome. I know Brian Cranston. They would awesome. go hand in hand. They're like the same age, the same like humor style. I think they'd be like buddy buddy. Another pick. Well, I'm at, I'm at two here. I'm, I'm trying to remember who's the, your best my, man. I haven't decided my best man yet, but. You need some more. You need some more man candy in your group to get the women. I'm thinking, best man is a tie between George Clooney. Clooney, man candy. There yeah. you go. You have a really yeah. old group. Or <laughs> Charlie Hunnam from Sons of Anarchy, just because I love the show. But I think he's too quiet. I think he'd be too shy. I think he'd bring the group down. Yeah. He's not. He's not. He doesn't. He's very, he's very well, much. The best not man a is supposed to be. Uh, uh, it's supposed to be a reserved guy, you know? Not necessarily. He has to watch the group. He's right. the acting adult on the bachelor party. Ex- exactly. Except I did not. I failed that both times. But, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, well, I got everybody out of the strip club, so I guess I did yeah. a good job I there. Mean, yeah. No one died, right? No one no died. No one got arrested. Not one person died. Yeah. And we were in New Orleans, so that's yeah. actually pretty much that's a pretty feat. pretty good, yeah. It's, yeah. like, uh, impressive. So, I would do probably George Clooney as my best man. Clooney. He just class. Class, class, class. But he's also really funny. Damn, I kind of wish I put Brad Pitt in there with me. Also was going to make my list. So I have George Clooney would be my best man. I got Will Ferrell. I got Brian Cranston. The Rock. Damn it. That's an awesome would one. Would be one of my groomsmen. Why did I not pick a single a WWE wrestler? Genuine motherfucking guy. Why is Roman Reigns not in my groom's party? <laughs> Why is Macho Man Randy Savage not in my groom's party? <laughs> Didn't he die? He died, yeah. If we were doing <laughs> mythical. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you could do Hulk Hogan. He would just walk around, just like no. I was going on really. I would 100 <laughs> put Roman Reigns. Now that I think I should have done Roman. So the Rock. And my problem is that one person, that one spot. Like who? Who do I want to fill it with? The Rock is such a good one. Fuck, yeah. dude. <laughs> Mines are everywhere. Like mines are kind of crazy. Jeter's, Jeter's gone. The Rock's officially in. <laughs> no, you can't sub out Jeter. I'm subbing out God. Jeter for the Rock. Ah. They were both sports, and I'm using quotes right now. Sports heroes of mine. <laughs> <laughs> See, who would be my, my last one? I, I always, I'm thinking of, like, mm, how much crazy do I want to get, though? 
Well, I mean, you got Heisenberg bringing all the meth, and then you got the Rock in there. So, I'm thinking Daniel Tosh. Tosh. Yeah, he'd be my number five. Solely because he'd be the guy that's crossing the line at every possible moment. Yeah, yeah. And he would say what we're all thinking. So who's the wild card? Will Ferrell? Daniel Tosh, for sure. And Daniel Tosh. Well, I think Will Ferrell. I think card. Daniel Tosh and see, I think Daniel Tosh is more crazy than all of them. But he'll just say things to where Will Ferrell will actually possibly act them out, and then that's why I have The Rock with me, just in case we get out of line. He can protect us. Yeah, no one's fucking with The Rock. And then I have George Clooney. Like, who the fuck's the fuck with George Clooney? Clooney could just talk as sweet talk yeah, everybody yeah. and they're letting us stay. Oh, you want to kick us out of this club? Oh, but why? I'm George Clooney. <laughs> probably Daniel Tosh, yeah. Would probably be my number five. Interesting dynamic yeah. you have. No. Yeah. It's all, that but that fits, could change in like five see, minutes. See, now I feel like yours fits more of a standard bachelor party where like you have people from all different Walks personalities life, yeah. and, and all mixed together. Like every bachelor party I go on, there's like, like, cl- you know, cliques of like three or four friends that have all known each other. But then there's like his old high school friends, and then like his college friends, and then like his work friends now, and and you, they all get together and they're and different that's people. Weird. I was the groomsman at a wedding, my, the most second most recent wedding. I didn't know anybody but the groomsman, and his. Um, his best man was like a childhood friend of his. I met him maybe once in years. And then the other three guy, the other guy was his brother who I met for like 10 minutes. And then the other like two or three guys were like his buddies in Jacksonville. So it's like, right. I didn't know them. Yeah. So it's kind of like they all knew each other, ex- but I was like and the that's outsider. How, and that's how bachelor parties are, are usually. But we had a great time. I, oh, I you always do. Because you just go and party with a bunch of people yeah, who want to party. Yeah, you get drunk. But, um. I feel like your bachelor party has a good, a regular, like a normal bachelor party dynamic of like different people that get together and they all probably could have a great time together. I feel like mine was like straight at it. Yeah. Mine was like really like, like a bunch of, like a bunch of young fucking crazy people getting together and partying. Well, I mean, I, I like mine because I feel like they can all be serious and then once everyone's drunk, they all just fuck around. I like mine because I know I'd be serious and I want them to push me away from that. So you picked Derek Jeter to push you away? No, I already subbed him out for The Rock. <laughs> no. Jeter would be my confidant. Jeter would be the one that you like the limo driver. Like he wait, like we wake up at, at the hotel and Jeter's like, dude, I really don't think we could go back out again tonight. And I'm like, I know, I feel like shit. And then Galifianakis comes in and throws powder on our faces and is like, let's go. And you're like, fuck. All right, all right, we got all it. Right, Galifianakis right, just made us. You got me. <laughs> And then Justin Timberlake comes in and starts singing some upbeat song. No, he doesn't song come in. He dances in. He just he starts singing some upbeat song and yeah. gets us in the mood. Yeah. You know, and then also, I think that the entire bachelor party would be DJed by JT. Like, everywhere we went. Yeah. I, I could not get enough I mean, he of does that, it all. You know? He's a utility man. Yeah. He's, yeah he he's, does everything. He's a jack of all trades. Yeah, jack of all trades. So what do you guys think? Who would beat your celebrity groom's party? Think you have us beat? Definitely, because they have more time to think about it. That's true, too. But I really like mine a lot, though. I mean, I a lot. I would say Bill Clinton instead of Daniel Tosh, but I mean, I'd honestly be happy with like old. the entire cast of Game of Thrones. Just, <laughs> just a bunch of murderous motherfuckers in there. The dead ones or the alive ones? All of them. All of them. Jon Snow would be your best man. Yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then the other four guys are just White Walkers. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? <laughs> Why am I so scatterbrained? Like, every know, episode, man. it gets worse and worse. I don't know. So who would be your celebrity groomsman? Let us know. Or, Comment it back. Or bridesmaids. We want to be sexually equal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... Do we have a women following on this show? We're Probably. about to get it. We're about, <laughs> I'm sure we have a little, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Who would be your bridesmaids and maid of honor? What? We're, we're, let's go there. Amy Schumer would be my maid of honor. What? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I don't like her. See, it's hard because it's like I'd marry them all. Right? That's yeah, exactly. Like, I would just be stacking the deck with women yeah, I want to bang. Like the, yeah, the top five <laughs> hottest chicks you want to bang. Right. <laughs> like all the Jessicas from the early 2000s <laughs> yeah. and, and call it a day. I see Kate Beckinsale, Jennifer Lawrence. We, we both agree <laughs> Kate Beckinsale is just the babe Gorgeous. of all babes. Aaron Andrews. <sighs> Could go on and on. Yeah. I couldn't do that. I don't know. I can't. I, I don't know. I just don't. So, yeah, comment what you think. Or if you have any improvements on ours, I'd be happy to hear it. Ready yeah. For- Maybe just characters that they've been in movies. Like, start thinking about that. What would, like, 
So what would be the weirdest character base of your celebrities? Darth so, Vader. So like, no, I'm saying like of the five celebrities you chose, so like you have like Heisenberg and then you have like The, the Rock. The Rock from like with Scorpion his WWE, King. No, with his <laughs> WWE outfit on. <laughs> and, then, and then when when they when the, the guy says, and uh, you may kiss your bride, you know, whatever the fuck they say, he takes his elbow band and throws it to the crowd. And he goes, do you smell a little? <laughs> I wish you could officiate my wedding. Oh my god, be so that would awesome. be the best. Do you do you take this man? It doesn't matter <laughs> it if doesn't you take this man. <laughs> and then Stone Cold Steve Austin comes with the background, just he slams smashes two the beers together and fucking chugs it. He, I want him to be my uh, my uh, uh, ring bearer. Yeah, bring the rings out on just, beer on beer just cans. Just crush two beers right in front of everybody. Beer gets everywhere, and I laugh my ass so off. So I think I would have to do. If I was going to do characters, I'd have to do. Obviously, Hangover, Zach Galifianakis. Oh, good. And then I would do Always Sunny, Charlie Day. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I already forgot who else I had. Justin Timberlake. Uh, Dick in a Box. Dick in a Box, <laughs> JT. Yeah. Lonely Island, JT. For sure, Dick in a Box, <laughs> JT. Um, Robert Downey Jr. Iron would. Man. You have to do Iron Man. Nah. He flies in with his suit on and shit. <laughs> okay, Iron <laughs> come Man. On, come on, dude. In the suit? <laughs> yeah, yeah in the so suit, not Tony yeah. Stark. Iron yeah, Man. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, him as Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Tony Stark. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. Crazy billionaire <laughs> yeah. asshole. Yeah. Love it. Have him, have him on the group with us. <laughs> yeah. And then who else did I have? I had one other guy. Oh, you had um The Rock. You subbed oh, uh, yeah. Derek Jeter. Yeah, that's the why rock. you can't do Derek Jeter because he doesn't have characters. Yeah. So The Rock, The Rock, I would have... The Rock from Scorpion uh, King. Scorpion King. <laughs> <laughs> He's in so many other movies. I can't. I can't. I would have The Rock from the Fast and the Furious franchise. <laughs> yeah, you go. Yeah. Hobbs. Not not Baywatch <laughs> Rock. <laughs> no. No, definitely not. No, I want The Rock from the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> I just want Hobbs. <laughs> Fucking machine gun. On yeah. Him. That shoots fireworks. He'll of be course. the enforcer. <laughs> yeah. Groosman and security. I don't know. I would have to re- let's see. Brian Cranston, I'd probably do as uh, not Heisenberg. Malcolm in the middle, Malcolm dad. In the middle, dad. Yeah. <laughs> George Clooney, oh, dude. I mean, any role. oceans? Yeah, oceans. All, all, any, 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 he's yeah. suave in all of them. He's suave. No, I, I do not want we're up, brother. That you don't want George Batman. Clooney. You don't want Batman, and Clooney. Ooh, that's a good pick too. He was an awful Batman. Yeah, no. But he's so cool, though. He was oh, cool. I would do Oceans. Those movies were bad. Oceans, uh, George Clooney. Uh, <laughs> Brian Cranston would be Malcolm in the Middle, Dad. Uh, Daniel Tosh, is it necessarily a character? No. Brickleberry? Nah, just do Daniel <laughs> Tosh. I'm Tosh.0. Nah, it doesn't, I'm, he's his own character, That's I guess. That's all he yeah, has. Yeah. Who else did I say? The Rock. I'd have to go with... Just WrestleMania rock. WrestleMania rock, yeah. <laughs> doing the people's eyebrows. Doing the people's eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> randomly doing it to everybody. Dropping people's elbows on yeah. everyone. He takes a cake and slams it. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was uh, Brian Kranz. Who the f- I'm missing somebody. Um, hold on. George Clooney. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Oh, my Anchorman. God. Anchorman. Yeah, anger yeah. man, Ron yeah, Burgundy, Ron Burgundy walking around with yeah. you. <laughs> I want, I want, him, no. See, he's my, he's one of my groups. I don't want him to officiate the wedding. I just want him to be in character the whole time. <laughs> As Ron Burgundy. As Ron Burgundy. <laughs> but I want all of them to give a speech Everyone. at some point, whether it's at the rehearsal dinner or at the ceremony. I want, in character. I want JT to be my my band for my reception <laughs> with all the members of NSYNC. Oh. They all come back. Nah, I don't know about that. And I'm then more, when you're leaving, we're leaving the, the reception. They're singing "Bye Bye Bye" as we get into the <laughs> we get into the limo. <laughs> You'd be giggling the whole way. I, like this is so fucking I awesome. I would think it's so funny. <laughs> That'd be awesome. All right. All right. You ready for a break? Ready for a break. All right, we'll you, see guys you guys comment back. You let second. us know what you think the best bachelor party or bachelorette party combo would be for you. Yeah, do it. All right, we'll be back. This is Mike from At The Bar Podcast. I'm here with Jeff. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So we have this new thing we thought of for all businesses and people can, can participate in. 
Jeff, tell them what it is. All right, so we're going to be doing the advertising spots. Um, we're going to be offering uh, opportunity for you guys to come on the show, and we're going to do uh, spots for you. Either we can do full shows, partial shows. While we're doing the, the breaks in the middle where you can have a, a advertisement similar to what we're doing right now. Um, or beginning of the show, end of the show, whatever you guys want. It's very uh, customizable. Anything that you guys want to get the word out about, uh, we are here and ready to put it out there for you. Yes, yeah, so me and Jeff thought of some customizable packages that businesses or people who are doing events can participate in. Uh, everything we have is a la carte, or you can pick up packages that we can do on social media, on the shows, breaks, beginning of the episode, mid break, which is what right now, the end of the episode, we can share events. Spread the word about your event or business through these customizable, super affordable packages that we are offering. Mm -hmm. So email us at atthebarpockets.com or find us on social media and we can discuss details. This would be awesome. Right, Jeff? Right. Ready. Let's do it. Done. And we're back for part two of whatever fucking episode this is. Now I enjoyed having Alki on last last episode. He was a good I time, did too, yeah. man. He's such a great guy. He did good. Yeah, you know, I, at first I thought everybody was going to be as nervous as I was to start this thing, but everybody seems to take to it a lot easier than me. I don't know. I'm maybe I'm just an idiot. I don't know. I get, I still get jittery. I I get really nervous and stressed when we go somewhere else because like yeah, you, you know, if we went to Red Cypress or Bowegans, like I get super stressed out. Because so many things could go wrong, and something always happens. This to is go just wrong. home, though. This is home know, for us. Comfortable. If anything goes wrong, we have equipment right here. We can always yeah, that's, do that. Yeah, that is true. I got I got tons of stuff upstairs. We don't have to worry around. about setting up video and noise or anything like that. We just come in, hook everything up, and go. So it's nice. I know I'm gonna stress in a, in a month when we go to South Florida. Four times. Yeah. I'm gonna be f stressing my ass off. That's gonna be a hell of a road trip. This be awesome. I'm excited. Because this we can announce it. I touch South Florida people. <laughs> Anybody in South Florida. Anybody in South Florida. We will be in town, South Florida, June 18th and 19th. That is a Saturday and a Sunday. Me, Jeff, and the house. Mr. Darren. Mr. Darren. We'll all be doing a massive at the bar podcast road trip. Brewery Pretty crawl, much, yeah. yeah. Brewery call. We're gonna be uh, meeting with some people at some or booty call. No, I'm just kidding. Breweries. <laughs> Breweries. Uh, we'll we be have at for sure. Funky Buddha. Four, right? Yeah, yeah. For sure. We're, we're for sure we're at four. So June 18th at noon, we'll be at Funky Buddha. Then do south that day, correct? And then nope. And then Saturday at fourth, four or four thirty, we'll be at Lauder Ale. Okay. They have. That's in Lauderdale. It's in Lauderdale. It's not too far. Yeah. <laughs> in case you were wondering. Water so we will be there Saturday, June 18th. More, We'll post details uh, on Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. And then June 19th, that Sunday, we will be at Kofner at 2.30 or 2 o'clock, which is like down the street from, it's like three blocks north of Funky Boot or some shit like that. And then around 5 or 6, we will be at Due South okay. in Boynton Beach. Due South, heading they back up. All officially confirmed. So we were all set. All we gotta do is show up. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. We don't even have to do a show. We just have to show up. I mean, we have to do a show, but yeah, we'll do that. We'll Whatever. do the show. <laughs> Whatever. But that's the easy part. Just doing a show. I'm just excited to be in with these guys. Yeah, man, so they're excited big, to have big us. Big names and, and big breweries. We're, we're excited to be uh, doing stuff with them. And and then we might we, we might swing it. by we might swing by Jay Wickfield. I'm not sure. Yeah, I kind of want to see how the day Saturday goes. Yeah. We were invited at Jay Wakefield for a free tour and. Uh, beer cool. on alex so we might we might do jay wakefield but if you're in south florida take the weekend off don't be a bitch come follow us around follow us around support local compliment how great jeff looks all the time be on the show be on the show yeah it's, it's possible so anyway jeff part two what you got lay it on me which one do you want to do it's your topic bro you want to you want you want to talk about this new space jam remake or let's do my other one. Okay. Let's do my other one. So similar, we're going to stay in the same. Uh, LeBron James. We're going to stay in the same okay. uh, kind of wavelength with this celebrity episode that we're doing. Um, but I actually got asked this question by a girl. Uh, thought it was an interesting question. So I started thinking about all the hilariously awesome possibilities of this answer. So the question is, 
if there were a movie about your life, what would the plot be? What would it be called, and who would play you? Go. See, I, okay. It would have to be about college, just because that's that took up 10 years of my life. And it's the funnest part. And it's the funnest part. Though I feel like college, personally, I, th- I feel like college movies are so cliche, and like very few are actually very good. So you would have to make the script good. I would have to, you'd have to make It'd the script good. It'd have to be good. real. Bring the feels. Yeah, bring the feels. So pretty much it would be... Every, I think I wouldn't want Ryan Reynolds playing it because he's Van Wilder. I am not Van Wilder. But script would be pretty much a Van Wilder-esque of me going through 10 years of school. You know, you know, so a comedy. It would be a comedy, yeah, of uh, going to school, parties, party every weekend. You know, you're in school, sober up, talk jokes that night, you party. There would be a little downer situation, a little sad sand panda. But then, you know... You rise like up. A heartbreak, like heartbreak. Like a heartbreak. A bad heartbreak. Yeah, heart, heartbreak. And then the main character rises up and eventually, above all obstacles, conquers and graduates college. Would um, would the Dumpster Mike story be in this script? No, because that's post-college. So that wouldn't make it. You could you could no. rework the script and make it in there. I could rework the it'd script. It'd be a good teaser. It would be a good teaser. Yeah, it'd be, um, and then the cops come and they it'd catch be like you. A, it would ah. be like a Deadpool-esque of... It's a teaser for a movie, but it's not actually in the movie. No, because the Deadpool teaser was the first part of the movie. But he's his teasers for the DVD. Like, oh, we're just him talking about just the DVD. him talking about like erectile dysfunction commercial. That's not obviously not in the movie. Right. But. Um, so you've now mentioned Van Wilder and Ryan Reynolds a bunch of times, and you don't want him to play you. No, I don't, because I think it's too cliche. I personally don't like him as an actor. I'll go out there and say it. I don't like him as an actor. I'm sure he's a legit guy. I probably would consider super him cool. in my groom's party. But him in movies, other than Deadpool, can't stand it. He was good in Deadpool, though. He was very good. Actually, that's the other DVD I brought today, besides Space Jam on Blu-ray, which I'm very excited about. Deadpool is pretty cool. Yeah. So, that would be my plot. My first idea for a movie. Who would play my character? I think Ben Affleck looks closest to me. You have a Ben Affleck look. But I feel Bradley Cooper would, would best represent the me in college. You in, he's too old to be in college. So is Ben Affleck. Right. You have to be thinking about this is college years. This is college years. So we got to do young. Well, I mean, look at Brad Pitt in The Curious Case of Benjamin Mutton. He was supposed to be getting older. Yeah, but he, he looks younger. But he, looks, but he was like young. All right, all right, Jeff, you're changing things on me. So I have to do a young actor that looks like me. Well, it has to fit the script. Uh, let's see here. I got to think. What's, your, what's yours? All right, so mine would be a comedy as well. Obviously, we both think that we're funny. I, I hope that people agree, but I don't know. Um, I think they think you're more funny than I am. Mine would also be a comedy. Uh, I think of mine as a similar to another Ryan Reynolds movie. But not Ryan Reynolds as well, but waiting because I am in the service oh industry. Oh, my God. Yes. And I just think it's fucking hilarious. So, that movie is so true, though. Yeah. All of that happens. Yes. That movie came out and I was working in a restaurant. Well, except for all the health code violations because that doesn't or, happen. Right. But besides that. But besides that. Everything else is pretty accurate. Y- y- the, the, the salad maker is definitely the old guy who's full of wise <laughs> knowledge. Right. And then... <laughs> The dishwashers sell drugs, which I was not, but I was a dishwasher. And then the cooks just bang the waitresses, and it's, they all do drugs it's, together. It's, it's all, accurate. yeah, it's pretty accurate. And too. then the hostess is like 16. The dynamic. The hostess and, is 16. And the manager and the always one. wants yeah. to bang them. I don't, yeah. yeah, it's weird. It's a weird dynamic in the hospitality world, but it's, it's, how, it's how we roll, man. Yeah. That's how we roll. Just, that's a hospitality culture. That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> But yes, so my movie would be similar to Waiting. It would be a movie about hospitality, about restaurants. Uh, I would be uh, I would be played by, and I thought about this uh, a little bit before I said it, but somebody very similar in, to me in temperament and in their style of, of, of comedy uh, is Mr. Paul Rudd. <laughs> Big fan of Ant-Man. Yeah, but I just, think that's a good pick. Yeah. Paul Rudd is yeah. just so, he, him, him and me vibe, man. He's my spirit animal. Okay. That guy just—he's got that sarcastic, quick-witted. I thought like, you were gonna short... say Jason Sudeikis. God, Jason Sudeikis you were is so on funny. Dude. The episode. I just thought the interview on on uh, what's it called, that show, Daily Show, mm. about Angry Birds was so fucking funny when he did his interview. But no, uh, Paul Rudd—I've I've always thought Paul Rudd was really funny, and he's just 
he has a, a quick-witted, short, intelligent style of humor that cracks me up. But yeah, that that'd be what I would do. I don't know what my plot would be. Maybe um, have you ever seen the Slam and Salmon? No. It's a broken lizard movie. The guys oh, who did yeah, Super Troopers. Super Troopers. No. Um, and uh, they have like a sales blitz for the night, and the leading server who gets the most sales gets a trip down to Miami or something. All expenses paid, and they're just battling all like the servers are all battling each other to be the highest sales. So something along those lines would be pretty funny, I think, to put the servers against each other. I don't know, but yes, yeah. it would be. I'm just trying to think who would who would play me in my own movie. I don't know many like I don't know a lot of young actors that. Like I think Zac Efron would be like a fucking obvious pick, but I don't think me him are a lot alike in terms of temperament and behavior. I would, and like I would, I was thinking Dane Cook. That would but be. I don't fun. think he's a good actor. That would be Sorry, fun. Dane. He's not, but it'd be funny. But I think me and him have a lot of similarities, especially when I go out. Yeah. And not just drink two beers and go home. I mean, when I go out. I, I think, can see Dane Cook. That'd be good. That'd be funny. I think he can pull off. He can pull off college. Yeah, they put a little makeup on him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you have to be, you'd have to look younger than he is. Yeah. You could just boy, you do my boy JT. Or I could just be The Rock. Timberlake. <laughs> the Rock could be my, my fucking Mike in college. Or so cool Steve Austin. Hulk Hogan. Any wrestler. Yeah, any wrestler. Roddy All Roddy Piper. All Macho of them. Man Randy Savage. You have, uh, you have not watched in like 20 years. <laughs> Neo, Usher. Big fan of wrestling. Still watch it. I don't. I think he's out of it. So, yeah, I would probably do, in terms of, like, how I am, I, I would Ryan say. Ryan Gosling. Ooh, no. See, I think he's too calm. I don't know. He, apparently, he was really fucking funny in that movie that he just had. Oh, with Russell Crowe? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I can only think Cook for now. And that, that's probably going to change the more I think about it. But considering the questions on the spot, I, I, yeah, probably Dane Cook. You want to pick Andy Dick for yours? I was thinking of Carrot Top. Joe Dirt. I was thinking of Carrot Top, <laughs> but no, I didn't. I didn't pick him. Yeah, Adam Sandler. Adam. Just boop 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 boop. He makes shit movies though. He's awful. Yeah. Just so bad. What happened to him? For real. I, he had Billy Madison, and Happy Gilmore, and that was it. All right, I want. I want to go into that. Okay. Side topic, not planned. Best Adam Sandler movie. Big Daddy. Really. Yeah, by far. I, that's that would be my top three. I don't think it's Big Daddy, though. It's a classic. You think Happy Gilmore? Also a classic, not his best. I think Little Nicky. Oh my god! <laughs> is probably Get out of here. my favorite. I think that's like his worst. No. Well, there, he's not. He's not a lot of worst movies. It's so bad. I was. I mean, maybe Jack and Jill is worse. Oh God. No, I, what about I, Click though? Click gets you with the that feels. That shit is sad. It gets you with the feels. Oh and, my god! And Sean Astin and Kate Beckinsale. And Kate Beckinsale, our what's, girl. What's up? All right, another question, Jeff, because you're piquing my creative interest. Name three movies that you cried watching. One of them for me is Click. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, click. I fucking cried. Click. Like not one tear, like tears. Uh. Click, Armageddon, Green Mile. Really? Armageddon. <laughs> Armageddon. Yeah. Okay. Click. Yo, that shit's sad, dude. Bruce Willis kills himself. Spoilers. People might not have seen it. If you haven't seen Armageddon <laughs> in 20 years, then yeah, you okay. should probably go see it. It's good. Click made me cry like a little bitch. It's Green like, Mile. Tell me, Green. Did you ever see Green Mile? Yeah, it's, that, it's, been, it's been a long bro, time since I've seen that. That movie makes you tear up so bad. All right, Click. And the last episode of Game of Thrones. Because <laughs> 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 if you didn't cry <laughs> watching that. I Get gave up. On, I gave up on that on the end of season four. Oh my god, you can't hate, do it. Hate comment if you want. I don't care. I'll write. I'll just write a blog about it. So, mine would be click, the curious case for Benjamin Button, because that shit built over three hours, and I fucking knew it was gonna happen, and it did. And I was like, no. Ooh, what about Marley and me? Oh yeah. When they killed the dog. Do oh yeah, come on. That's so sad. Yeah, that's sad. I didn't cry though. Oh, I am legend. Dude, I cried yeah, too I didn't much. Cry. What's up? And then the third movie. You didn't would cry be, when the uh, dog died in I Am Legend. No, I mean it's sad, but dude, what? No. Curious Cage of Benjamin Button. Are you got made of so stone? Hard. My heart's cold. Yeah. And then my third movie would be Ladder Forty Nine. I haven't seen it. It came out like soon after 
it was like it's pretty much the same thing as 9/11. As Twin but Towers, like, yeah. the movie Twin Towers. Yes, but when Nicholas uh, Nicolas Cage. Uh, who was in the, John Travolta was in that movie, and like some other big people were in this. It like came at like six months after 9/11, and the firefighter dies saving an apartment building that caught on fire. Like very similar. There's a lot of similarities, and I fucking cried just because of the timing. And that's it. Fair enough. I think I Am Legend was sad. It's sad, but it makes me cry. Not at the end, though. The end isn't sad when he fucking blows his, ass, blows his own self up. Curious Cage, of Benjamin, Curious Cage of Benjamin Button made me cry the most. I have never saw it. And I was alone watching it, which made it even worse. And then Click. Click I wasn't expecting. Click was a surprise. It snuck yeah. up on you. It's supposed yeah. to be a comedy all of a sudden to hit you with that. Yeah. I was like, nah, that's not yeah. cool. Green Mile sad too. It's Green so, Mile is, is it so Shawshank sad. sad too, or did no. he not know? No, Shawshank's a redemption story. Uh, Hence yeah. why it's called Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Oh, what about Radio, dude? Oh yeah, fucking that's, Radio. Yeah, dude. That, that shit one. hits you with the feels. Yeah. Trust, Cuba Gooding a, Jr. plays a good uh, mentally handicapped person. I think that's his best movie. I do too. Yeah. It's an amazing role yeah. for him. What else? I, I, uh, we never rehearsed this, and I'm okay. I'm no, glad we that don't. we do. Yeah, I was, I was trying to think. As we're recording at the same time. I can't think of any more. I cried too much, apparently. I, I've cried in, like, nine movies now. You need to stop that. I'm like, I, we, I, I cry at, like, those Facebook the videos. The season finale of MTV Real World? I yeah, cry. Like I, cry, I cry, like, when... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> those videos that pop up, and it'll be, like, a positive video, like a fucking, like, little kid catches a fit, his first fish, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's so cute. <laughs> fucking kid caught a fish. <laughs> yeah. You know which one always gets me? <laughs> Soldiers coming home to their pets. Oh my god! Always yeah. gets me, dude. The dog Sarah knows. Sarah McLaughlin makes me cry all the time. The dog too. knows. It's like the kid. The guy's been gone. He's been gone for four years overseas. Yeah. He comes home and the dog knows it's him. Yeah. And it's just like what? Hearing Sarah McLaughlin's voice makes me cry because I. <laughs> it's like oh shit, she made me feel really bad. I kind of hate her. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's wrap it up. Wrapping it. Nice, nice, easy episode. Wrap it. Wrap it. Always wrap it, guys. Yes, don't be Dumpster Mike. Be Hollywood Jeff. Wrap it. Wrap it. So, June 25th, yet again, the WAB, the first annual World Beer UCF Homebrew Fest, sponsored by World Beer UCF and Red Cypress. And at the Bar Podcast. And at the Bar Podcast. June 25th, from 3 to 6, there's 24 homebrewers, and a lot of them are opening breweries pretty soon. Yeah. So a lot of them are experienced brewers. They should be making excellent beers. Um, I know in the last couple of episodes I said I was making a beer. I gave up my spot. For the, Valiantly. For the, for the greater good. Um, I don't remember their names, but they're opening a brewery in about a year or two. Toll Road Brewing. So they are taking my spot. My apricot, vanilla, orange, cream ale is not dead. I just will not be making it for the event. But... Three to six, we'll have great specials for if you have a wrist band. Yeah, right? we're doing we're that. We're doing some tavern fair specials. There cool. is going to be a band. band. Uh, it's going to be a reggae ska type band. Uh, cool, just good vibes. They they confirmed. They confirmed. We got cool. them, man. They're in. So we're going to have a, a really nice, like a, a cool band outside. We're going to have uh, all the home, all the home oh, brewers oh. and everything uh, set up. But I mean, if you guys don't know about the event yet, I mean, we've talked about it every episode, so. Go check it out, Wab UCF. Uh, our World of Beer UCF's Facebook page has the links to it and everything on there. Also, go to Eventbrite.com, type in Wab UCF. That's W O B space UCF. It'll pop up. It's the only event under there. Uh, you can buy your tickets at Eventbrite. They're twenty dollars whether you buy them there or at the door of the event. So, uh, buy them online ahead of time. Um, tickets are limited. We only have so many. And spaces. we've sold a lot already. Have so, we? Yeah. Awesome. So it's actually. Get them, get them while yeah, you can. For real, we're not, uh, we're not shitting you. We only yeah. have so many. Once we're out, we're out. We can't do any solids. We can't, right? You know, scratch your back. Once we're out, we're out because we only have a certain amount of sample cups, glasses. And, yeah. We only have so much, and we're only insured for a certain amount of people. So yeah, we can't really be doing anything to no more big, solids. So yeah. yep. So go to Eventbrite, Wab UCF, just like Jeff said. Buy your tickets either online or buy them at the bar. We suggest buying them at the bar because you get to drink a beer when you buy your ticket. If you buy it at lunch, you can sign up for. Are you guys still doing the lunch club card? Yeah. So come in, 
to Wob at lunch, buy your ticket, then sign up for the lunch club card. You get once you get uh, nine lunches, the tenth lunch is free, and, and a half you off draft half off every draft, single day. Half off draft every lunch when you present your card or a free soda. Correct. Correct. So why the fuck are you not going to do that? I have a lunch club card. Do you? I did. Well, I mean, yeah. But I, I'm here every <laughs> I'm day. I'm the one that does. Yeah. I'm here every day. I started day. it. Of course, <laughs> I have one. <laughs> and then make sure you come and get a cheeseburger so Goose has to make it, and he'll bitch about it. Or yeah, I should he, say Alan because he looks like Alan from The Hangover. Now that he has the he shaved, has head. shaved head. Yeah. So, anyways, nice. check us on all social media: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we are on iTunes, Google, Google, Play. Google Play, and Stitcher. We're we're fucking everywhere. If you type in at the bar podcast on Google, you'll find us. We're pretty popular. Number one craft beer bar, beer, craft beer podcast in Orlando. Though we do have competition now. So with that said, we bid you guys adieu. Until next time, we'll see you at the bar. <laughs>